thank you, Father. I'd just like to say to the Holy Spirit, just please come among us today. You are with us today. And to open our minds and liberate our souls today, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But if I was to put a title on what I'm going to be talking today about, it's going to be, Let This Mind Be In You. Amen. Amen. Taken from Philippians 2, verses 5 through to 11. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon himself the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things beneath the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So shortly after Pastor Steve gave me the opportunity, and I thank you for that, um, of addressing you today, the word let this mind be new was the first thing that came to me however in preparing for this uh, I needed to know it's just me personally I just needed to know that let this mind was a valid translation from the original because when I looked into it there were at least two ways of interpreting this this particular phrase it was either let this mind be new or have the mind or attitude of Christ. Furthermore, a lot of, been, a lot of people have been cheering and all that. <laughs> and, uh, but I find that I had a duty, as scripture says in uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, to, to pray and also to study to show myself approved unto God. Yeah? A workman needing not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That was, there's a burden and a duty associated with standing up here in that sense. And finally, this was based on an experience that I had before when I read John 14, 21, where it says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And who who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself unto him. When I saw the word manifest, and that it was God's desire for me, in that sense. I was right chuffed, as they say up north, <laughs> or excited. <laughs> uh, but I, I was soon deflated when I read another version, read it in another scripture, which had a different meaning to it. Yeah? So having had the excitement, and all of a sudden there was a deflation in my, in my spirit. But the Lord was gracious to me at that time, I used to visit uh, the local prison uh, and led worship. Sometime I would actually lead the Bible studies. I think I, I don't know if I did. I invite you to that session one time. Yeah, but on on one occasion, it was led by a sister from another church who um, led the Bible study at the time. And at the end of it, she asked the inmates to give their favourite verses. This was unusual at the time because. We didn't really have a lot of time <laughs> for a lot of verses to be given. Um, but God, I think this was arranged by God. Um, only one, I think, only one inmate stood up. And he stood up and recited from memory the same scripture that I just read to you a while ago. Um, John 14, 21. That he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And... He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Again, when I heard the word manifest, it confirms to me that that was the right emphasis that God wanted for me that day. Uh, although I was a bit confused with the different versions that I was reading from. So, in the same way today, I, I would like to ask the Lord to anoint this message. Let this mind be in you, that is also in Christ Jesus and confirm it today with signs following. Amen? But before we go into that anyway, I'd just like to say that 
having the mind of Christ isn't really the focus of today anyway. Um, because it's not really talking about the mind of Christ which is referred to in 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16, which says that, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But, who, but he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of, of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? All believers have the mind of Christ. Amen? Which makes us able to discern spiritual things that the natural man cannot, or the unbeliever cannot understand or receive. Having the mind of Christ is the same as being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And both the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit are obtained through faith at the moment of salvation. It is important to note that having the mind of Christ isn't just about a mind-to-mind -mind connection with God. You know, as we are used to today, hooking up to the internet or downloading things. Yeah? It isn't that, really. But rather, the Father earnestly desires fellowship. Amen? In John 14, 21, in, in verse 20 rather, it says that, that at that day you will know that I am in the Father and the Father in me and I in you. That is essentially what God wants, that relationship. Amen? For out of that will come his knowledge, his wisdom, his plans for our life. Yeah? It isn't just a, a matter of connecting to God um, because nobody can understand God in, in all his, his godness, in that sense. So the best way for us to be more aware of the mind of Christ, since we already have it, is to keep his commandments and the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit will come and abide in us we will be then carriers of his presence everywhere we go. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So let this mind be new. In returning to that subject that we're talking about, let this mind be new. I was then satisfied, having gone through all that, that the, the Greek phrase, toto phronite in hymen, meant this, let mind be in you. Yeah? That's what it means. This, let mine be in you. And you can see then that the inclusion of the word this is talking about a specific thing. Yeah? It's not the general mind of God, as it were, or the will, the purposes of God, but it was talking about a specific mind. And it could probably be best translated as let this mindset be in you. Yeah? So, as I looked further into this, I saw then that the word let conveys quite a few shades of meaning, which was quite relevant for this passage. To let means to allow, to permit, or not to prohibit something. Yeah? In other words, to allow something to happen, or someone to do something by not doing anything to stop the action. Yeah? So when you say let, we are actually, that's what we're saying. We're letting it happen. And you'll see later how Christ let himself be subject to death and so forth. But what the Lord showed me as well was that not everyone is able, unfortunately, to allow or to open themselves up to receive, uh, even to understand the scriptures. As we see in... 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 because they are spiritually blind. You were, have you ever wondered why you can't get through to people? Yeah? When you're trying to communicate Christ to them or the gospel. This is one of the reasons. He says, in whom the God of this world, the small g, yeah, the God of this world has blinded the, the minds of them which believe not. 
lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is in the image of God, would shine on them. So this is the reason, or one of the reasons, why people today don't understand us, yeah? Or don't get what we're saying. In the gospel, Jesus saw the need, and he was aware of not just the need to open physical eyes, but also to open their minds so they can understand the scripture. I was kind of surprised by that, that he had to pray for them, for their minds to be open. So sometimes it says that our minds are locked, really, and there's blockages that can occur. However, I bring you good news, that today, amen, right now, the anointing is available, amen, to break the power of darkness and any yoke of bondage, whether spiritual, emotional, or physical, in our lives today. And we don't have to leave this place with any of those things anymore, in Jesus' name. Amen? And we've heard from the testimony of Stuart earlier about the things that he experienced in his life in the past. God is able to break those yoke. Amen? In Jesus' name. And that's what I look for today. Another reason could be the lack of knowledge. We saw that in the example of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, 27 to 40. We see the story there. The eunuch, a eunuch is a man who has been castrated. Uh, I'm not sure if it's, it's still happening today, um, but it's either done voluntarily or uh, it's a condition of employment in the past at least anyway. Um, he was an important official uh, in charge of the tre treasury of Ethiopia, the queen of Ethiopians. And he was traveling, uh, he, tra he, he traveled to Jerusalem at the time, and he was traveling back home. On his way, he was sitting and reading from Isaiah. And the Spirit of God told Philip, who was a disciple at the time, to go to the chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading and asked the question, do you understand what you're reading? He then replied by saying, how can I, unless someone guide me or explain it to me? Yeah? So we see then that sometimes the reason why people don't understand or don't receive or don't allow you to, or allow the, the Holy Spirit to minister is that they need to, in their own, con you know, the way they're made up, some people need a bit more understanding or more information in order to act upon what you're saying, in that sense. So first of all, we see that it could be a spiritual thing. Secondly, it could be a lack of knowledge. So people have to be informed, in that sense. We can't just tell them something and expect them to respond immediately without um, any further information. So we see then that um, he was reading from Isaiah where it says, he was led, Jesus was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its sharer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In humiliation he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The, the, the eunuch um, then basically was baptized later on. Yeah? So he and Peter must have had a, a sort of lengthy conversation where he talked about baptism as well. And he, he, at one point he says, oh, there's water there, what, what's hindering me now to be baptized? Yeah? So we see from the, the story from the eunuch that he was reading his Bible even though he didn't understand the Bible. Yeah? So it, what it says to me there is that God saw his sincerity, his sincerity on reading the scripture even though he didn't understand it. And then he got, in, he got Philip involved in the process. And later, we saw, after his baptism, Philip was whisked away, or transported by the Holy Spirit. So this was a bit like Star Trek, beam me up Scotty. <laughs> so that, was, that happened long before that, anyway. <laughs> the next area is offense, yeah? Offense against God. Um, for example, I had a, a colleague at work that asked me, you know, why did God take my son? One of those hard questions to answer. Yeah? 
his son, he lost his son in an accident. And um, he wasn't blaming God for the accident, as far as I understand it, but he was asking, why did God not prevent it from happening? It's a different type of question. Some people blame God for that, really, for the loss of life, which basically touches a raw nerve when it comes to talking about God, to them, anyway. And it sort of evokes strong emotions. And these, these emotions can block the light, as we talk about, from coming in, the light of the gospel. So what you're saying to them is just basically hitting the wall, yeah? because there's offense there. There can be offense in the church as well, or against the church or Christians. Uh, Jesus, in Luke chapter 17, verse 1, it says, um, he said, it is impossible that offense should come. But woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a milestone would hang around his neck and he'd be thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Offenses will come, yeah, for various reasons. But the scripture says we should be aware not to allow that to happen where we, where we can. I mean... Finally, on this point, a person could be closed off emotionally. And this is where, uh, due to traumatic experiences from childhood, uh, bad breakup, divorce, and death, uh, these experiences can cause blockages in people's lives. But remember what I said earlier, that today is the day of salvation. Amen? Today, the anointing is available to break the yoke of the bondage of emotional blockages, things that binds us, and they are called heart walls, yeah, where it's you just hitting the wall, basically, yeah, and they prevent us from receiving love, uh, block us from trusting others, and forming new relationships, and leave us feeling isolated potentially. Yeah, or lonely. So what is the mind or mindset that we're talking about? As you may know, right, we are a spirit. Just say to your neighbor, you're a spirit. I mean, <laughs> you're a spirit. Uh, which is the, the part that we have in common with God, yeah? The spirit part of us, yeah? We also have a soul. Let's say you have a soul. And you live in a body. <laughs> Amen? Did you know that? Okay. So the mind is, the, is, is part of that soul area, which consists of the following. Thought, imagination, memory, will, and sensation. It's the part of us that makes us believe or experience pain, desire, and emotion. A mindset, then, is the established set of, of attitudes held by someone, or a way of thinking. In, in other words, a way of looking at or approaching something. Or a way of interpreting the world and its events. If you look up in Google, as I did, the word mindset, you will see that there are two definitions. One is said to be a fixed mindset, and the other is a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is, is somebody might say, I am born this way, okay, that's how I am, yeah. which means that they feel stuck with no options at all. Whereas a, a growth mindset is a person who is probably more self, in, into self-help yeah, attitude, self, it's all to do with self. And, and they might say, at first it's hard, but I'm sure I'll improve on that. All I need is a bit more persistence. Persistence is the key. Yeah? So that's what they tell themselves anyway. But then I'd like to add a, a third category which, which is not listed. A Bible mindset or a biblical mindset which is Christ-focused. Yeah? And there, Philippians 4.13 is our key scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're not relying on ourselves. 
although, yes, we can help ourselves at times, but we are we're looking to Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Amen? So, Christ's mindset. We see that in verse, in Philippians 2, verse uh, 6 to 8, where it says, um, it, it could be said that he came down on many levels. Yeah? We sung earlier, you came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross, by debt you pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. So we see in verse 6 to 8, there are many stages in which Christ actually allowed, and this is where the word let comes into play, because he had to allow it to happen to him. First of all, he says that he, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant, made in the likeness of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things beneath the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So we see there that when it says being in the image of God, he was already God interacting with the Father and the Holy Spirit and the angels in heaven. And that's talking about his pre-incarnate state, having equality with God and the Holy Spirit. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Which means that he did not consider it Equality with God, something to be, hold, you know, to, be, to be held on to, to cleave on to, yeah? One, one question that I had here is that, you know, what are we willing to do to give up, in that sense? You know, Christ, he, he came down, on, as I said, on many levels, in that sense. I think I was listening to uh, Derek Prince recently, and he said that, you know, the lower you go is the higher you become, yeah? Because it's God who's actually promoting you in that sense, yeah? So if you humble yourself, he will exalt you in that sense, yeah? So he was made, he made himself with no reputation, that's the next one, where it is said that this would be better translated as empty. He didn't empty himself of, of being God, but he emptied himself of the glory, you know, or the manifestation of the glory of God in his life. He emptied himself. Now, we see that there was a glimpse of what the glory meant here in um, Matthew 17, verse 17, where it says that after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up to a high mountain by themselves. There he was transformed transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Then there appear before them Moses, Elijah, talking with Jesus. I think this was the Father manifesting the Son. It wasn't Jesus manifesting himself. And if the Father wants to manifest his Son, that's his business, isn't it? In that sense. So, but the thing about this is that if Jesus was to appear every day like this, yeah, where his clothes was bright, his face was light, yeah, nobody would interact with him. Yeah. yeah? Nobody would want to, they would think he's a freak, yeah? So, he came down and took on the form of a servant. And... I was listening to uh, the Archbishop during the Queen's funeral where he, uh, what stuck out with me on that particular occasion was, he says, concerning the Queen, people having, people of loving service are rare in any walk of life. 
leaders of loving service are rarer. But in all cases, those who serve will be loved and remembered when those who cling to power and prestige are long forgotten. Christ took upon himself the form of a servant. He allowed the process to happen to him, yeah, without regretting it, without murmuring, without complaint. That's what Christ did. He allowed the process, he let the process happen to him. So when we're going through our difficulties, yeah, do we rant and rave? Yeah. Do we, or do we allow the process to happen? That's a question for us. Yeah. So he humbled himself, not being selfish or trying to impress, thinking of others, thinking on the interest of others. That's what Jesus did. It can be very hard being humble because people might think you're weak yeah, and might want to take advantage of you. But remember that when we humble ourselves, he will exalt us in due season. Amen? He became obedient unto death. He says, even the death of the cross. That phrase, even the death of the cross, basically points to the fact of the humiliation of the cross for Jesus. Yeah? In all that he had to go through. Even the death of the cross. Because there were many different ways to die. But the death of the cross was his way way that he had to go. Amen? I was looking at what, what Christ was going through in his mind at the time. And I saw that there was a, there's a phrase called mind, state of mind. I was considering his state of mind. Yeah? State of mind is a legal term. Uh, the, the thought and mental condition of a person at a particular time or during some event which may affect or not the, behave, the manner in which the person reacts to the situation. Sometimes it's used, if you look at the state of mind, you could actually secure a conviction probably, if you look at it in, in a criminal sense. But Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, not my will, Father, he says, if, if it's possible uh, to let this cup uh, pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. In Luke 22, 40, 42. It also said that, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It wasn't a pleasant thing, but he endured it. And we see that in uh, Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the Father in heaven now. You don't have to like the joy, I mean like the, the pain and the, the discomfort that you go through. Yeah, But you can look towards the end. Amen? Look towards the end. Someone said that this was a strategy that Jesus used. It was his strategy to overcome by looking towards the end rather than go, you know, considering what he was going through at the time. He actually looked towards the end. The joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. And we could do the same today. Amen? We can endure, endure all the difficulties that we're going through, all the pain and the issues that we're facing by looking towards the end. That's what the, the Christians in Hebrews 11 also do, in, in 11 13. These all die in faith, it says, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded by them, that's a key thing, and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. If you don't get what you want 
it's not the end. Amen? We look forward to the, to the, to the hope of our calling in Christ Jesus. Amen? This was part of the reward in verse 10 and 11. It says that, Therefore God has highly exalted him, Jesus, and has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things beneath the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God Father. Another thing is that while he was on the cross, he was thinking about you and me. Amen? He, he prayed in John 17, 20. I pray not only for these, the people that were in his presence at the time, but also for those who will trust in me because of the word. Are you trusting in him today? Well, you're part of that, um, that sort of group. Hallelujah. So, in final... Finally then, where are we today? Where are you at today? Uh, I'm not asking you to put hands up or anything. <laughs> but I just sort of um, want you to look inside. Have a look inside at where you may be. Are you open and receptive? Or well, stick in a box then, in that case. Are you unable to see or understand due to spiritual blindness? Are you holding on to an offence? against God, against the church, or his people? Do you feel emotionally cut off or wounded, which is affecting your response to God or to the message? Remember, the good news is today, as Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord so that is the message today the good news is that the same spirit that raised him from the dead is in this building today Amen. and he's here to break the yokes and bondages that we might be facing in our lives today. But first of all, I'd just like to ask for anyone who, perhaps listening to that, you've come to the light, or you would like to come to the light. Is anyone in here today that is in that position that would like to receive Jesus as their saviour today? Having heard that? Perhaps uh, as we all close our eyes a minute, I'm going to repeat a prayer that you can re repeat as well. And let us know if you repeat it for the first time. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Please forgive me. Come into my life. I receive you as my, save, my Lord and Saviour. Now help me to live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, I'd like to, to ask anyway, if, if anyone has a need, uh, we will pray um, in support of, of that need. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Sorry, um, Stuart, I think there's a, a song that you, if you could play for us, please, yeah. So as this song is is been yeah ah okay sorry not available okay so let's come forward if you do need prayer for anything today especially anything that you hear today that touches your life in that sense yeah so Father we thank you for your word O oh Lord we give you praise right now Father thank you for your Spirit being here among us today. To set the captives free, oh Father, in Jesus' name, we give you praise. Amen. Hallelujah.